Hey everyone, uh, very happy to be a part of this uh, Money Dance um, virtual conference. So today um, I wanted to talk a bit about um, an area of the market that I think is, is, is very interesting to me and very potentially big. So a lot of the talk about cryptocurrency for the past decade has been about how um, it's, it's replacing money and how the market for money is sort of the largest market that exists, right? So we're kind of tackling um, the thing with the single sort of greatest upside that you could imagine, which is not an individual business based in a specific geography or an individual business model, but rather money itself and how that is, of course, an extremely large potential market. Um, I also, though, think that we're seeing the early stages of the development of another absolutely enormous market that's sort of uniquely made possible by blockchains. And so I want to talk about today how I think the corporate structure itself, um, that is sort of the, the traditionally legally defined entity structure, which allows humans to coordinate capital and work product around a specific goal or business model, could actually be automated in many ways and moved natively to the internet with pure software systems built on top of blockchains. And so I want to talk um, a little bit about why I think this is um, happening, right? And why I think that this will continue to happen and grow in a very big way. So there's a lot of talk um, in the DeFi landscape about financial product automation with smart contracts. So this is sort of the ability to build a lending system, an exchange system, um, and the like with a totally automated software uh, a bit of logic that is programmed directly into a blockchain. However, when we see the way that these um, financial products are emerging, there's kind of a parallel breakthrough in the background, which is the capital and human organizational structures that are being generated to support these DeFi products. And so um, what I mean by that is that you know, a lot of these DeFi products are sort of owned by an underlying um, set of token holders. And I use the word owned here somewhat loosely, but these are systems like Compound, which is governed by Comp token holders, MakerDAO governed by MKR holders, um, or Uniswap governed by uh, Uni holder, holders. And so there's kind of this um, ability to coordinate capital and coordinate humans around this uh, DeFi product. Um, but that capital coordination and human coordination is not happening with a legal entity based in a specific geography. It's 100% native to the internet and sovereign to the internet. And so the ability to coordinate capital basically means a really big multi-sig where people can vote on how to allocate that capital and all of the various ownership units of sort of that capital and that underlying smart contract business um, is sort of, you know, traded on secondary markets. And so you have turnover of, um, of quote, management and who sort of has votes on how to allocate that capital or how to upgrade or change that product. So there's many very similar characteristics here to the traditional corporate structure where the corporation itself is sort of above and beyond any individual person that's a member of that corporation. And there's very fast uh, turnover of ownership units um, in secondary markets for the underlying managers or owners of that corporation. But it allows people to coordinate capital and take on much larger challenges than any of them, uh, any of those underlying owners would be able to take on individually. And so I think that um, What's very important to me is that to specify is that the tokens associated with these, you know, these DAOs or these sort of, you know, I like to call them um, internet sovereign corporations because I, I don't think they're just organizations. I think in general, they're very much for profit entities um, and they're, they're not really autonomous in the sense of software being autonomous. They're really um, governed by all the underlying holders of the assets that um, in theory, are sort of rational actors and are going to maximize value creation for those token holders by consistently upgrading and changing the decentralized financial products they're operating, as well as managing the capital that belongs to that DAO in a careful manner. So the tokens associated with these DAOs managing DeFi products are not, you know, quote, cryptocurrencies. Um, they're something really quite different to me. 
they feel a bit like shares um, of an online business, but of course there's no legal entity or geography where that sort of business, so to speak, is based. These DeFi products, again, are totally sovereign to the internet. So there's not really um, a legal entity anywhere here. So of course there's not really shares in that legal entity. Um, we've sort of moved both of these native, uh, natively to the internet with the blockchain. And when I say both of these, I mean the actual product itself um, is sort of embedded in the blockchain and the capital structure which supports that and owns that product is also native to the blockchain. And so it turns out that when you can sort of build a business model directly on a blockchain, as well as remove the need for a bank account and legal entity, um, which were sort of tethers to the traditional sense of business in a geography, you can sort of move natively to the internet. Um, so this is kind of not just software eating business models, it's actually software eating the business entity itself, right? Where you have a pure software system that governs that underlying business model, coordinates capital, and can accrue revenue for the underlying um, um, token holders. And so um, there's a few macro tailwinds, I think, that are going to make this area much, much bigger than it is today, even though it has grown a lot in the last couple of years. Um, so first is that um, over time, we're going to see much more scalable low-level systems that can support these internet sovereign corporations and DeFi products. And so when you see um, things like the Avalanche launch, um, you know, upcoming exciting launches to support file storage like Filecoin, um, you're going to see more complex products be deployed to these blockchains. So today, you know, DeFi to me is sort of a narrowing of an older concept we used to talk about, which was dApps, right? Decentralized apps. Um, at some point that was sort of narrowed to DeFi and it's because Ethereum today really can support these financial uh, bits of financial logic as DeFi products, but it doesn't do so well at, at supporting more expressive, complicated web-like applications. Things like social media platforms or identity systems or video systems. None of that um, is really well supported by Ethereum today, mostly because of the scalability limits. However, smart contracts on Ethereum can do financial and mathematical logic, which is why we've seen the success of DeFi, but the relative failure of, of more traditional web-like experiences that are operated in smart contracts. However, when we see more scalable substrates la launch that can actually support um, these DAO-like uh, capital structures, I do think we'll finally come full circle and start to see more expressive web-like experiences that are sort of natively embedded into blockchains. And you're going to see these sort of internet sovereign corporations coordinate capital and ownership around those sort of blockchain-based dApps. And so um, the launch of these more scalable blockchain systems, I think is a massive tailwind uh, for these sovereign corporate structures, as well as the types of products that you can embed in blockchains. Today it is DeFi, um, but again, I think we've mostly seen success there in part because of the scalability limits of the existing uh, substrates that we're building on today. Um, and there's a lot of reasons to build these sort of internet um, native business models. Um, so these DAO-like structures, you know, I think they're the newest highest leverage possible way for an individual software engineer to, to, to generate value. Um, a long time ago, you know, if you wanted to create a web business, you really had to host the hardware yourself. Um, and that, you know, took a whole team of staff, right? Just to host like server racks um, that you were physically managing. Moving off hardware and, and abstracting that to the cloud allowed much smaller businesses to get off the ground much more cheaply. Um, you saw sort of a software and internet business renaissance in part enabled by the cheap cost of cloud computing and the ability to launch a web business extremely at an extremely low cost. And so we saw smaller and smaller teams generating billion dollar businesses. Um, rel you know, compared, you know, from the 90s into the 2000s, you really saw significantly smaller teams generate billion dollar businesses. I think for the first time ever, we now in the crypto space, have individual software developers generating billion dollar, you know, quote, businesses. These aren't, um, you know, exactly the same as a traditional web business, but I think they look and feel very similar in many ways. 
And this is totally precedented, unprecedented for individual software developers to create uh, uh, billion dollar kind of operations. Um, and it, I think is uniquely made possible by these sort of community governed DAO like structures, which support this um, um, business logic that's embedded directly into blockchains. And so over time, I mean, I think we're already seeing a, a relative renaissance um, in sort of DeFi and these DAO or internet sovereign like structures. But I think we're going to see more and more. Um, we're going to see hundreds of automated fund managers, um, financial products, and eventually more rich web apps like social media apps get created, especially with the strong tailwind of more scalable platforms to build on, as well as uh, uh, platforms which are more friendly for traditional web developers by supporting more traditional programming languages. Um, and these will be owned, right? These sort of internet sovereign structures are gonna be owned by global communities of token holders. Um, and I want to argue that these are the early instances of actually replacing the traditional corporate structure itself, which is sort of registered with the state and, you know, trapped in a specific geography um, and tethered to um, the traditional financial system through the traditional banking system. But when you can automate this uh, ability to coordinate capital um, in kind of a big multi-sig, vote on how the business should be upgraded or changed, as well as have secondary markets where the ownership units of that corporate structure um, can shift around, you know, you've really effectively replaced most of the important pieces of the corporate structure itself with a pure software system embedded in the blockchain. And that is a really, really big deal. Because to me, this is taking on um, a potentially absolutely massive new market, which is the corporate structure itself. Um, so I would like to argue that this, we talk a lot about um, the market for money and how the cryptocurrencies, again, this kind of traditional concept of a currency like Bitcoin is taking on uh, the concept of money. And I think that's an extremely big market and something that I've been involved in for about a decade. Um, now, though, I think we're seeing these sort of new types of structures take on uh, the corporate model itself. Um, and I would argue that this is also an extraordinarily large market. Um, if you look at the value of, you know, every corporation globally, obviously, that's a very, very big number. Um, so I think it's a very big deal that we're seeing this creation of these new token models where it's not really a speculative quote, currency in the concept of, in, in the way that Bitcoin is, it's really tied to a more specific business model, even though that business model is a pure software system embedded in a blockchain and all the human and capital coordination associated with that sort of, quote, corporate structure that manages that um, blockchain embedded software product is, is, you know, all sort of automated with software and is a pure software system outside the scope of any specific jurisdiction or geography. And so I do think that these faster base layer chains launching today, um, as well as um, more specific chains oriented around delivering um, content like video or, or images or text um, into smart contracts will enable many, many, many more of these structures to launch um, based around more and more complex financial products. Uh, so in, in some, I think that um, this is going to be another very big market that blockchains can take on um, is not just the market for money, which obviously is a very big one and one we've been working on and chipping away at for 10 years. Uh, but now I think we're in the early days of beginning to take on the corporate structure itself and automating that structure with pure software systems on blockchains. So thanks everyone for listening.